Park Street Books is proud to sponsor the Mike Page Doodle Club. Find them locally at 504 Main Street, Medfield, Mass. Open Monday to Saturday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. and Sunday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Or visit parkstreetbooks.com. No matter where you are, that's parkstreetbooks.com. Hey, Doodle Club, welcome to the Mike Page Doodle Club anniversary live special with your host, Mike Page. Wow. Thanks, Brett. Uh, hi, welcome to the Mike Page Doodle Club one year anniversary episode. I'm your host, Mike Page, and I'm joined in studio today by my good friend, Brett Poirier of Medfield TV. Yeah, I'm so excited about this. This is one of my favorite shows that I've ever been a part of. And so I'm so excited to be celebrating one whole year of the Doodle Club. Me too, it's been a lot of fun. Um, I've enjoyed it uh, since the first episode. It's been something that I had no idea what I was doing when I first came here. You just said, hey, let's put this on the air. And I said, all right, let's do it. It's been so much fun. Um, and now we have so many changes to talk about. So obviously the, the live anniversary is kind of the, the kickoff of a new color scheme for you, new social media pages, a new sponsor. People saw the sponsor that we have for you. What do you think about that? The uh, Park Street Books is your new sponsor. I love, if this show was gonna be sponsored by anybody, I love that it's Park Street Books. Uh, Jim James is a treasure of Medfield, so I'm honored to be sponsored by Park Street Books. Yeah, it's uh, such an awesome place. We've been talking about it for a while now because we've known about it for a while. But, you know, it's just the little kids, like absolute, best place for them to go. It's so much fun. And people from all over can go on parkstreetbooks.com and, and it's it's a great sponsor. So I'm really excited about that. We have your new logo as well. Yes. And the kids get to have a, a drawing instruction. Of course, what is a Doodle Club episode without you showing us how to doodle something? We get to doodle you, your face. Yeah, so uh, when, when we were discussing what we would draw today, you said, well, clearly we should learn how to draw you. So sorry guys, you're stuck drawing me today as one of the doodles, but I do have one other drawing uh, in mind afterwards. So. Yeah, I'm excited about the, the pirate ship as well. Well, look, we are, uh, I don't know if that was a secret, I just let the cat uh, out of the fine. bag. It's <laughs> It's there now. Blew it. But I am, <laughs> I am so excited about this. So let's just get right into it. One more surprise for you, sir, is we have a surprise guest who is going to be doodling with you. It's not me. I'm not doodling with you today. Oh man. So everyone give a big warm welcome to Scuttlebutt co-host, <laughs> Kathy Ferris. Yes. <laughs> We're so excited now Kathy joined us today. Congratulations. Thank you. Made it a whole year. Wow, made it a whole year. Yeah. In fact, I think it's our anniversary too. We met about a year ago. Yeah, about a year ago. Yeah. It's funny, uh, quarantine, um, was obviously not much fun, but mm -hmm. um, I managed to. Well, yeah, I managed to make the make the most of quarantine. So, met met several awesome friends in the process. Mm -hmm. so. Me too. Me too. I'm excited. All right. So, do you have all of your stuff over there? You've got a pen, some paper. Yep, I got it all. Okay. All right. So you're going to grab a pen, pencil, marker, whatever you're drawing with. <laughs> And we're going to start, I'm going to do it lightly in a ballpoint pen, and then I'm going to switch to a gel pen. We're going to start uh, with, oh, nope, sorry, I forgot we're drawing the logo first. I'll go ahead with this one. Um, we're going to start with pretty much a straight line down. It's at a little bit of an angle, but not too much. And then we're going to come out at another angle, so instead of it's almost like a vacuum cleaner shape that we've got so far, and the vacuum handle is up here. I'm already doing it wrong. That is going to be... <laughs> this will be... Don't be afraid to make mistakes, Kathy. It's fine. Uh, this will be my uh, forehead area and my cheek. And then I'm going to swing down like that. This will be my chin down here. Oh. So I will be looking that way. I made it your nose. Oh, all right. Uh, so for the nose, we're going to be making pretty much the same shape. So it's going to be a line down. Then this time, this line out is going to come up slightly. And then we'll kick the pen down like that. Hmm. Just a little swoop shape. 
And now that we've come this far, Kathy, you're looking like you're having some reservations. Is no, it I'm having on? a great time. <laughs> Uh, now that we've made it this far, I'm going to give myself some eyes. I'm going to be very focused on my drawing here. So first I'm going to make that eye, eyebrow kind of furrowed like I'm doing this, really thinking about it. Um, and underneath that, I'm going to make a letter U. And then inside of that, I'll make a small circle and color outside of the small circle, so that will be the reflection in my eye. And then for the other eye, I'm just going to make an oval. And then again, inside of that oval, we'll make a circle for the reflection and color in outside of that circle. Now that I have this much, I can go ahead and make the rest of my jawline. So I'm going to make a line kind of coming out like that. And then as I make the rest of my jaw, I'm going to take that directly into my ear. So I'm going to swing up, almost like I'm back making a backwards number nine or a capital letter P. And that's just a little bit rounded off. And then inside of that, just a real quick line like that. How are you doing over there, Kathy? Feeling good? Doing good. All right. It's like doing taxes. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully it's a little more fun than that. All right, then we're going to make my hairline. Actually, no, well, let's make my mouth next. So again, I'm really thinking on the drawing. So I'm going to have my mouth kind of a downward slope like that. And then I'm going to make an oval, like my, or most of an oval, like my tongue is sticking out, because I'm really concentrating. And next we'll make my hairline. Uh, and I want to make this as one big curving line. So I'm going to come up and then swing way over and up like that. I don't really know how to describe the shape that I just made, but basically you want it to be one continuous curve. Then after that, we're going to make a few more curves near the front part of my head. Uh, and then we'll do a couple quick scribbles coming down towards my ear. The faster you make these scribbles, almost like uh, if you can remember when you were a little kid and you had no idea how to write in cursive but you pretended to, that's kind of, uh, anytime I'm talking about making quick scribbles, I'm usually channeling six-year-old me pretending I knew how to write in cursive, um, if that helps with the you description. You knew how to do cursive like six? No, I had no idea what I was doing, oh. but I pretended I would, on my paper, I would just go like this, like I was writing in cursive, and that's kind of the... That's impressive. Yeah. My, one of my sisters wanted to be a teacher, so I spent a lot of time as a kid playing school. Um, so that was exciting. Is she a teacher? She is a teacher, yep. Yep. I have three older sisters. Um, two of them work in schools, so. But this one knew by the time she was like four, she knew she would be working in a school. I like that you're like, I have three older sisters, two are working in a school, and we will not talk about the third. <laughs> <laughs> My oldest sister is known to be the fun sister. Um, unfortunately for the kids out there, she is not a teacher. Um, I also added in a pencil, like it's on my ear that's on the far side, and I added in um, one raised eyebrow. And then next what I'm going to do is give myself a little scruff on my face. So I'm just making a couple quick lines along here. This is sort of a stylized version of me. Um, it's got a little bit of almost like a Jetsons feel to it, I think. Um, next I'm going to make the bow tie. Um, so for that I'm going to make, this is basically a rectangle, but I want it the corners to be rounded off slightly. 
And then from each side, I'm going to kick the pen out like that. And then we'll bring it in and mirror that shape. This is kind of similar to like a butterfly shape, I guess. Um, and then at the top part of the bow tie, we're going to make two quick curved lines like that. And if you want to put in a couple of wrinkles coming out from the center where the knot is, you can. And from here, I'm going to make my neck so that my head isn't just floating. So we've got a line coming down towards the bow tie and another one back here. And then from the bow tie to the bottom of the neck, I'm going to make a line out. And then we'll make the back part of the collar like this. And then the end of the collar coming down and we'll connect that. And from this side, we'll just have a little bit of the collar poking out. I'm realizing I'm making this collar very wide, but that's all right. Uh, and then I'm going to come down like that in sort of a V shape. And we'll put my shirt buttons in that space. And then just real quick, kick the pen out on either side to show that I have some shoulders there. And that is the Mike Page Doodle Club logo, brand new for this year. Hope you enjoyed following along for that one. Do you um, want to see mine? Yeah, I want to see yours. OK, I decided um, uh, I just did a picture of me with my fictional fish, that, Alicia. That is amazing. Is that? <laughs> Kathy's not the best at following directions, but, <laughs> but that is doodle, an incredible right? doodle. I love it. For all you kids that decide that you, after a while, you get tired of following directions, just go your own way. Yeah, and that's something that I've actually mentioned a number of times uh, throughout the last year. Uh, I'm doing something one way, and I always encourage if you want to, if you did your own logo, basically, which is great. Um, but even with this, if they're partway through it, if you're like, I don't want to give you hair like that, I'm going to go this direction instead. Totally fine. And I won't be offended by whatever version of me you drew, so it's fine. Um, are we ready to tackle a pirate ship? Yes, I okay. am. Um, as we go through the pirate ship, Kathy, I might even show you how you could turn it into a rowboat if you wanted, so that that way, if you go a different direction. I like it. <laughs> um, so boats are something that I always wanted to know how to draw as a kid. I used to draw the typical sailboat that was just a flat line and a couple angled lines in with some triangle sails, and I was never satisfied with that. Long after I had learned how to draw other things, I found that uh, if I sat down to draw a sailboat, I was still drawing the sailboat that I drew when I was five, because that's the way I learned it. Um, today I'm going to teach you how to draw a much more realistic boat um, that's tricky, but it's all based on things that you will know how to do. So um, I met a guy at a boat show probably 10 or 12 years ago, and I was telling him I was incredibly jealous of how well he drew boats, and he was painting watercolors, and he said, do you know how to make the number eight? And I said, yes, of course I do. He said, then you know how to make a boat. So what he did was very quickly, I just did this kind of slowly, but very quickly he drew a number eight sideways. Then he came in and he said, you only want part of that number eight. So he went over it again like that. And this space is what we're going to build our boat off of. So from the back end of your eight, you're going to bring a line down. By the way, this absolutely blew my mind when he showed me this. By this part, I already knew half of what he was going to tell me, and I couldn't believe it was so simple. Then we're going to make the line down at the uh, other end of your eight. That would be the 
port side of the ship because I'm going to have this one coming towards us. And then where your bow will be is whatever, wherever your highest part of your number eight is over here, we're going to make a line coming down and it curves slightly, uh, a line curving in towards the middle of your boat. Hopefully by now you're starting to see a boat shape um, forming. How's it going over there, Kathy? I'm killing Are you, it. Yeah, I'm you got it? killing it. Perfect. That's what I like to hear. All right, now, so I had mentioned for Kathy's behalf, I would show how to make this a rowboat, just in case somebody out there says, I don't want to make a pirate ship, I want to make a rowboat. If you wanted a rowboat, somewhere over here, you would put the oar locks, and for that, it would basically just be a letter U, where your oars will stick out. Um, and your bow would be right here, your water line is down here, and you would pretty much already have your rowboat. But I'm going to make this a pirate ship, so I'm going to keep going. Uh, where I made the line for the bow, I'm going to bring another line down like this. And next I will make the bow sprit, which is that long uh, plank of wood that comes out from the front. It's not actually a plank, but... So next we made the bow sprit. You can also make um, planks of wood running the length of the hull of the ship if you would like. To do that, you're just going to make a bunch of lines running parallel to your top line, whatever that is. Uh, if you're drawing vertically like me, try to remember to keep your pinky from hitting your easel because that always throws your lines off. I make this mistake every time. Um, but one of the important things with doodling is you have to be willing to make those mistakes because other, if you're not willing to make mistakes, you'll never get very far. And that's whether you're drawing or learning how to play guitar or if you want to be a hockey player, if you're not willing to make mistakes, you're not going to get very far with whatever hobby. Um, next, I'm going to put the mast. And the mast is going to sit right where your number eight intersects. So from here, actually, I'm going to switch to this pen for now so that I'm not making this line super dark. If you're using pen, this is a line that would be good to make in pencil. Sorry, Kathy, I gave you that information too late. It's OK, I only have two pens anyway, but I thought I'd change for dramatic effect. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that, that will be our main mask there. Um, and then I might squeeze in one more mask. Uh, if you want a second mask, your four mask would be, now you start kind of dividing. So the next mask would be about halfway between your bow and your main mast. And this one I'm going to make a little bit shorter than my main mast, like that. And next what I'll do is I'm going to start working my way back. Uh, from the bowsprit, I'm going to make a line that goes up to the top of my foremast here. If you only made one mast on your ship, this line will just connect to your main mast. So it's connecting to whichever mast is furthest forward, I guess. Uh, next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a jib, which is that triangular sail on the front of the ship. Um, so for that, I'm going to come down like this. And they're not quite straight lines. I'm adding a little bit of a curve to it. Now that I have this sail flying, I want to make sure that it's properly secured to the ship. So I'm going to bring a line down towards the hull. Now your next jib will be behind this one. So your next line is going to be a little bit lower on the foremast. And it, part of it will be running behind the first jib. Uh, and we're going to make another 
sort of curved L shape down here. And just like the first one, we need to connect it to the hull. Otherwise, you've just got a sail flapping around, and that's no good. Uh, next, I'm going to put some of the spars on this mast here. So we're just making a few lines across. Um, a lot of times when I draw a ship like this, I go ahead and draw all the details on the mast first, and then I work my way forward. It's probably easier to work your way backwards, because now I'm not having to make kind of scribble over where my mast was. I can just add in the details and not have to undo things later. So we'll put three spars here, and then we can make them basically really skinny rectangles going across. How's it coming, Kathy? Oh, it's great. <laughs> was there sarcasm in that, or are you? No, it was all sarcasm. OK. <laughs> I'm, I'm curious to see what kind of ship Kathy is drawing. I don't know. She might be on a Carnival Cruise Line right now. It's anybody's guess. She might be drawing the fun captain of the Carnival Cruise Line. Um, and I can't wait to find out what she made. Me too. <laughs> um, off of these spars, I'm going to put the top sails. So this is the kind of stuff that usually I work my way forward. And then as I draw the sail, I'm drawing. You can see uh, that I drew over this mast in the light pen, which is fine. But if I had done this all in the black pen, I'd have to be scribbling in the sails black so that you couldn't see that. Um, and then just like the jib, they need to be tied down to something. So I'm just going to kick the pen out towards the corners of the next spar down. And same thing for the next sail. I'm just going to fill most of the space here coming down towards the next one, and then connect it at the corners. If you wanted to put some kind of logo on your sails, you can do that. Um, on this next spar down, I'm actually going to have one sail furled just to show how to draw your sails if they're not down. So I'm basically going to make a few smushed U shapes like this. And when I bump into where the jib is, I'm just going to stop. And then inside of that, just a couple quick lines to make it look like some folds. And then now that I have all this, I can draw in that mast area that I had done so lightly at the beginning. Now I can make it official. And I'm going to go ahead and scribble in my mast. And you, ideally, you want it to be a little bit thicker at the bottom than it is way up at the top of the mast. And now on the main mast, we'll do the same thing. Make a few spars going across. Um, and these are going to get a little bit wider as they go down. I think we might make three sails on this one. And then we're just going to make those shapes again. These are almost like parentheses shapes and a very smushed rainbow shape there. And then again, just connect it to the edges of the next spar. And then on to the next sail. How many sails are there? Um, on this one, I just have one sail left to go. Oh. But so let's see, I made two here, three, so that's five, seven. This one will have eight sails. Is that historically accurate? Uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not positive. 
they would probably have, have <laughs> more than that. Um, I thought you were going to bring in Coles here, Kathy. I thought you might mention a sale at Coles. Not that. So would, I was, that would have been good. If you were sensing my anticipation there of what was to follow. Oh. <laughs> um, and then same thing down here. We need to tether these lines towards the ship. Um, and then I can go ahead and make the mast now that I have my sails. And I'll go ahead and scribble that in like I did the other one. I can't wait to see how Kathy's fun captain is coming. Mm -hmm. All right, and then uh, other things that you might want to add, you could add the uh, ship's wheel back here if you want. And for that, I'm actually going to make it kind of an oval, even though we know it's actually round. Uh, the angle that you're seeing it at, it would look more like an oval. Um, and for that, we can just kind of scribble in a couple smaller ovals, and then go ahead and, whoops, make a few tick marks going around it and a base that it's sitting on and a few spokes. Um, and then this is my favorite part to draw is the flag at the top. Uh, since I said this was a pirate ship, we'll go ahead and make a pirate flag. Uh, and then sort of a letter C that has fallen over for the skull. And then an upside down staple. Make two eyes and a tiny little nose. And then we'll draw in the crossbones there. And then on the next part, maybe we'll make a pennant coming out. So for that, I'm just going to make two quick curved lines, bring a line down, and then we're going to, this line here, we want this to be a nice smooth transition. So this line here, we're going to curve back like that. And then same thing, we're going to come down again and we want another nice curve here. So it's going to curve out like that. And you can make as many um, bends in your banner as you'd like. I'm just going to make one more. And we just want nice curves at the corners there. And then have it come to a point. And there's your pirate ship. Completely based off the number eight, turn sideways. Wherever your highest point is, that'll be your, where your bow is. Um, where the eight meets in the middle, that's where your main mast will be. And then if you want another mast, that'll be about halfway in between those two. Fun trick, took me until I was like 23 or 24 years old before anybody showed me how to do that and it changed me. <laughs> Couldn't believe it was that easy. Kathy, I'm dying to see yours. How I went in out? a completely different direction. Well, I first started doing it and then it was a rowboat and then I was doing a pirate ship and then I thought, no, um, so mine is like a pirate ship, rowing ship. This kid made poor choices, so he's in a timeout. <laughs> this is his mom on a Zoom call, and this is Dwayne The Rock Johnson, um, Disney superstar. He's going to rescue the kid. That's amazing. Thanks. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> it's proportionally not right. Who, who's on the Zoom call? It's um, his mom. His mom's on a Zoom call. So She's good. an accountant for H&R Block. <laughs> She's very busy this time mm -hmm. of year. Well, Mike, the kids can't see me on camera right now, but I'm going to come up to you. And we have a special, another surprise for you on your anniversary. I'm going to stand back here. I feel like it's my birthday. Yeah, right? It is. So we have a Doodle Club cake for you. <laughs> oh. That's amazing. And this is the, the very, I'll bring it right up to the camera here for everybody. This is the very first Doodle of the Doodle Club. 
So I that guess you awesome. can hold that. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for, for giving us one whole year of the Doodle Club. I'm so excited about this. Yeah. But uh, the, the fine people over at Donut Express were so excited. They asked me, uh, what little kid drew this dinosaur? <laughs> <laughs> And I had to explain to them, this guy. <laughs> I told them, I said, no, you know what? A lot of little kids got to draw this dinosaur. A lot of people got to draw this dinosaur. And it's because of the things that you got to do. And one more person got to doodle your dinosaur on top of that cake. So thank you for everything awesome. that you're doing. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I'm going so, to set it right over here. We will we will enjoy the cake. I'll join Kathy now. I'll, I'll come over here. I'm jumping all sorts of leave. different cameras. <laughs> Kathy, you can join us as we watch now. We're going to watch the highlight video of Mike Page and uh, oh. some of the highlights of the whole one year that you've been with us now. So we're really excited about this, but here comes your highlight package uh, can't of, wait. of the Mike Page Doodle Club. Let's see what made the cut. Grab some paper, a pen or a pencil and follow along. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. The important thing is that you make your mark. A lot of times I'll have kids tell me um, at the after school program that I work at that they can't do something or they're not good at something. And I, I think no matter what your age is, it's, it's easy to lose sight of the fact that everybody has something they're not great at. Everybody has plenty of things they're not great at, but there are things that you're not good at yet. You can get there if you work at it. So that's definitely a worthwhile thing to remember, whether you're pursuing drawing or painting or soccer, doesn't really matter. What matters is that you're willing to put in the time and make it so that eventually you're good at it. You don't have to be perfect today. You just have to be willing to work towards tomorrow. If you want to get very good at doing this, do it a hundred times. I'm not joking. Uh, if you do a hundred of these, you'll have it figured out. By the end of the hundredth one, you'll go, I could draw this with the light coming from any direction I want. Next, I'm going to do a letter C that face planted on itself for a nose. I like to look for really basic shapes as I'm drawing because I find that it makes it a lot easier for people to follow along. Uh, especially, I work with young kids, and for a five or six year old, if you show them a drawing and they want to copy it, it's very hard. If you tell them that it's a letter C, everybody can do that. No matter what you're drawing, just look for a really basic shape hidden in there. Everything is made of basic shapes. Now you're going to need to draw shoes too. Um, we can just do some quick little, uh, those are kind of like Charlie Brown feet. Uh, it's just a quick oval. It's almost like a small Italian bread loaf for a foot. I like to make my cartoon people a little bit ridiculous. So now that I've made this guy look so tough, I'm going to give him a really tiny toothpick arms because to me that's way more entertaining than actually making this guy look super tough. Uh, and then I'm going to give him a little broccoli hands. So these are just quick little squiggles for fingers. If you're somebody that kind of holds a pencil with a death grip, um, I, I know a lot of my students when I used to teach seventh and eighth graders at camp, they, they're used to holding a pencil the way they do to write and they would have a really difficult time trying to go any lighter than that. Um, and my advice to go light is almost pretend that you're trying to like tickle the paper with your pencil rather than you know mashing into it. Um, and the further back you hold your pencil, the harder it is to press down hard. So if you hold your pencil way near the back and just kind of lightly feather it like this, even if you are typically very heavy handed, you'll be able to shade much lighter. And if you're somebody that draws too light, the thing that will fix that is lots of practice because as soon as you build up the confidence, you don't mind drawing things darker. So I think it, I think it was being timid when I used to draw too light. I was af af afraid to make the mistakes. But if you practice and practice and practice, you, you stop worrying about it so much. I'm actually kind of going off of my paper, but I'll, I'll still finish it so you can See the last of those details? That's actually kind of breaking a rule of mine. I always tell uh, kids or anybody really when I'm teaching people how to draw something, uh, when you 
make one of these mistakes and you find the edge of your paper, don't be afraid to admit I ran out of space and, and stop drawing right there. Um, if this was not as a demonstration, I would have stopped it as soon as I reached the edge. Um, the, a lot of times the tendency is to start cramming things before you reach the edge of the paper and it's better to just let it, let it run out of room. This line wasn't quite right on mine, so I'm going to try to fix it. Again, this is why I'm always saying don't be afraid to make mistakes because this is the first go and if you sat down and tried to do another one, you might, you might realize that you could have done it better. That's, that's fine. It's all part of the process. For anybody drawing at home, here's my advice. I know that's a mistake and I pointed it out to you. You all know it's a mistake. If you draw this, and you do it fairly well and you show somebody, most people aren't going to go, their eye won't go straight to the mistake. Yours will because you know it's there. Here's my secret, don't point it out. There's always a mistake in everything you're gonna do. If you don't point it out, a lot of times nobody else will notice. So keep it your little secret and you'll get away with it, most times. You might have been following along at home and you might have changed something five minutes ago on this and said, no, I want to do it a little bit differently. I highly encourage that. And I think if you see a different way of doing it and you want to head a different direction with it, absolutely do it. That's the whole fun of drawing. And what I really like about um, teaching how to draw simple things like this is um, when I do this at my after school program, I love seeing that Every single kid got the exact same directions on how to do it. But when I walk around and I look at theirs, they all come out, come out very differently. And uh, almost always you can see the kids' personalities within their drawings, which I think is really cool. Um, but it's kind of fascinating that everybody gets the same directions, but you, know, you interpret it a little differently or you, know, you might stray from the directions a little bit on one step because you feel like it or because you weren't listening, that's always also an, op uh, an option. You might have seen some things where you say, boy, I don't like the way he does that. And uh, sometimes it's every bit as beneficial learning what, what you don't want to do. Um, because what works for me doesn't work for everybody. And what works for some really incredible famous artists doesn't always work for me. Uh, everybody approaches things differently. In this one especially, there's no uh, set answer of how the end is going to look. You're going to decide that. There is no right way to do it and wrong way to do it, uh, where it's more just about getting something onto the paper that wasn't there before you started. It's not necessarily how to draw a specific thing. It's just emphasizing the importance of creating something. Fun thing with doodling is you can basically make it however you want. There's no rules to it. You just go with it and whatever comes out comes out. If you love it, awesome. If you don't, try it again and maybe the next one comes out a little better. You can also make little captions for what's going on, what he's thinking. Have some fun with it because the whole joy of doodles is seeing what you come up with and how ridiculous you can make it. Usually my goal when I'm doodling is to make somebody else laugh because that makes me pretty happy. So hopefully you can try that out and enjoy it as well. And if you're a grown-up watching along with this, don't forget that this is way more fun if you're following along doing it yourself. Um, I've actually had a couple adults recently tell me that they've been following along with this show and they're actually really enjoying it. So don't, don't be afraid to be a kid again and doodle a little bit. It's good for you. One of the things that I love about drawing, um, you, you start to sort of be, have a better visual memory of things that you've seen, I think, by, by practicing drawing. Uh, so if you sit and look at something and study it to draw it, you, uh, you'll remember the lessons that you learned from doing that. Uh, and I feel like people that take the time to sit and draw kind of have a better visual map of the world than people that don't draw. You're more mindful of small details and things and You're always learning. If you, every time you sit down to draw, you'll learn something. Whether it's a technique thing or if you just make an observation about something in the world, you know, 
You'll always learn when you sit down to draw. To me, half the fun of drawing is that every time I sit down, it's never quite what I want. Um, but I like the challenge of, of working with what I've already made and then trying to redeem it as much as I can and still get something that I'm happy with at the end. If I'm sitting down to draw on my own, it's rare that I care about how it comes out. I usually just want to enjoy myself for a little while and maybe relieve some stress. Um, and this is the way that I like to do it, putting pen to paper. Thanks for watching another episode of the Mike Page Doodle Club. I hope you enjoyed taking uh, some time out of your day to kill some stress uh, and just put something on paper that wasn't already there. Have a great day and we'll see you again next time. Hearing all of the things that you just gave to us too, the, the tips that you give kids, the advice that you give them, um, it must mean so much. I, I, I love the, to hear the, the compilation of all the tips that you've given. Well, and it's funny because I was watching that and I'm thinking, boy, I talk a lot. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, to me, the hardest thing of doing this show is kind of explain, talking as I'm doing it. Um, because it uses the right side of your, uh, drawing is the right side of your brain and talking is the left side of your brain. So it's kind of crossing signals to, to be describing what I'm doing and going into a conversation. Um, but I, I think it, there's a lot of life lessons in drawing of just not being afraid to mess up. And, you know, if it didn't work out, try it again. And um, so it was cool seeing some of the, some of that recap there. Mike, let's talk about how this whole show came about. Like how all of it actually came up was one one message. One you put out a quarantine doodle club. Yep. And then it was uh, just one quick little message that I put out there on Facebook, and and suddenly here we are. Yeah. So it actually showed up on my Facebook memories two days ago. Uh, my first episode, I think I was drawing uh, my dog Winston in that one. Um, and you there had, it is. and you had messaged, hey, we want this. Uh, can we can we do this? Um, and then two days later, apparently it was already on TV. So that's pretty cool. It's uh, it was amazing. You know, it's about fifty, a little more than fifty episodes now that we've done. Uh, we started by doing like every day. So that was one of the things we started every day, and then we we were like, okay, Mike's here too often. <laughs> we started doing once a week, um, and then. From there, it, it was we syndicated it 1,300 times. Other communities have wow. have downloaded and watched this um, from Maine down to North Carolina, and then across all the way to Texas. Um, your your show has been syndicated. What does that mean to you? What is that like to know that people are watching it? Um, it's wild. So like when you had first said early on, like oh, it's already down to North Carolina. I was like, what? Um, so it's it's weird knowing that it's so far. Um, so I had mentioned that the hard thing for me is talking while I'm doing this. The other hard thing that uh, the last year, this has actually been like a very, um, like a great learning thing for me because I I mentioned in one of those clips that, that was in the highlights of like, uh, don't point out your mistakes because no one else will notice. I have prided myself over the last like 10, 15 years of, I had finally learned that lesson. Don't point it out. Nobody else is going to see it. Uh, and then this show started and every drawing I can point out things that like, I wish I had done that differently. I, and this has taught me like you have to just let it go. And yeah, there's mistakes out there that now people, someone in Texas saw it and went, that guy doesn't know what he's doing. Look what he just did. And, you know, but that's all part of this. Pro it's all part of the show, as my dad says. Um, you have to just embrace it and roll with it and, you know, keep going. I love that. Do you get recognized? Like, do people know? No. You, know, you, don't, <laughs> you don't go to a Cracker Barrel and they're like, right this way, Mr. No, not, <laughs> not yet. Someday. You know, it's funny. Just yesterday, I'm literally in a, a meeting. I mean, obviously, a meeting for me is talking about talking to other access stations. And we were talking, and they were from Danvers. And they, I said, you know, one of our shows is, you know, this doodle club thing. And they went to Mike Page Doodle Club. They're like, <laughs> we love that show. And it was so cool to, to, it was cool for me that one of my shows um, is being recognized, but it's really cool to, for, for you 
as well, that you're being recognized. Um, I love that. It's been really cool throughout the year seeing kind of how things have progressed. Um, we've, the camera setups have been different. Uh, sometimes there's monitors on where I can see what's going on and sometimes I can't and the easel has changed. Um, so it's been, it's been fun kind of following along the progression of it. Some of the things that you're, you're known for now are obviously, you know, your bow tie, uh, you're known for all, all sorts of different things, but then there's, there's kick it out has been a <laughs> constant, a constant of the show is kick it out. And yep. that's one of my favorite things that now that you say, wh what is kick it out? Wh where did that come from? Um, so I first learned it from my photography teacher actually in 11th, uh, no, excuse me, in 12th grade, he saw me practicing drawing eyes before class one day and he came over and demonstrated how he thought I should be doing it to kind of streamline the process and the overall thing would look better. Um, and what he was doing was essentially kicking out his pencil. And as soon as I saw it, just like learning this figure eight trick for the ship, as soon as I saw him doing it, I went, of course, like that's so obvious. Um, but so kicking it out is essentially uh, just doing that. Um, you're pressing down hard and then you're, you're kicking it out. Um, and it, sometimes it's a straight line, sometimes it's a curved line, um, but that's something as simple as that is, it's something that if you practice it a bunch of times, uh, practice it as straight lines, practice it as curves. Um, so eyelashes are essentially a whole bunch, of, well not even a whole bunch because you don't want to draw too many eyelashes or it starts looking too cartoonish. Um, but eyelashes would just be a few of those kicked out lines like that. Um, and then one or two over here. Um, but if you're trying to draw them carefully, it won't look as good as if you have the confidence to just do it quickly. He can't stop teaching. I know, <laughs> I know. He <laughs> can't stop. You have a lot of like Mike Page-isms, like kick it out. Like if you had merch, what would it have on it? I don't know. Maybe I maybe I need to come up with a kick it out t-shirt. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> kick it out. I like it. I would wear I would rock a kick it out t-shirt. Yeah. People at home, let us know. Go to the Mike page. Go to the Doodle Club on Facebook yeah. and and let us know if you would want a kick it out t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> but so now the uh who you've now become an inspiration, right? You you I, I think that you have you know, you have people that are at home. I know people are watching at MAP right now who are excited yes. about seeing this. Hello to all my MAP friends out there. Yeah, absolutely. This has been awesome to watch. Who are some of your inspirations? Where do you draw inspiration from? Um, I think growing up, there were two definite inspirations for drawing. One was my dad. Um, he showed me how to draw like Mickey Mouse as a kid. He showed me how to draw a bunch of simple things. Um, I think there was, that we did an episode early on that was airplanes and I, sh I demonstrated how my dad taught me to draw airplanes that, I'm gonna do it real quick because it's super fast. It's a circle. This plane is coming straight at you. There's two lines for the wings, here's the tail and you scribble for the propeller. It's brilliant and it's super fast. Um, but as soon as I saw how to do that, then he showed me like we would make paper battles essentially where we were like he'd create an army and I was drawing planes and you know we'd have these battles um, but that's the kind of thing it's like uh, that's the fun of drawing is like creating something and it, it can turn into a game or whatever you want it to be um, but so my dad is definitely one of the inspirations for it and it's funny because he doesn't even really draw that much but he definitely instilled it into me um, and interestingly enough, one of his nickname, his nickname for me, and when I was a kid, he still calls it, calls me that sometimes is Doodle. Uh, so it's perfect that this is the name of this show. Um, and then my other big inspiration for art um, would be N.C. Wyeth. He's the guy that illustrated um, Treasure Island and drums and all kinds of uh, the Scribner illustrated classics. Uh, if you want to read any of those books, make sure you get the N.C. Wyeth illustrated editions. They're so much better. Um, but he was just able to put so much into a picture that like would bring it to life. So I like studied his stuff when I was a kid. So you, you said it multiple times that, that anyone can doodle. And I remember it was one of the first episodes that we did. Um, you talked about how your friends and your like other adults forgot what doodling was and forgot the joy of doodling. 
what what are some of the things that that you think like what are some of the things that people should try like with doodling like what was that um i think whatever you're excited about so like for me yeah i'm 37 year old 37 years old i still love pirate ships i still think they're cool i just mentioned um nc wyeth with treasure island it's my favorite book like so this is something i can still get excited about a pirate ship it's it's who i am you know i'm still a kid um so whatever ex excites you whatever thing kind of stirs up your imagination that's the thing that you should try to draw whether it's you know a pirate ship or um a soccer game going on whatever it is that you're into that's the thing that you should practice drawing the last thing i want to leave you with is uh you know your your tagline the the, the quote that you say every time don't be afraid to make mistakes just make sure you leave your mark where what does that mean to you um so again through through this process it's been constant like i have to just accept that i'm making the mistakes uh, so that was always the thing that I was saying is don't be afraid to make mistakes. Just let's just do this. Um, and then as it went, you know, then I added the the important thing is you you make your mark because if you if you're not willing to put your pen on the paper or your pencil or whatever, it, you're, you've done nothing. Um, and I kind of alluded to that earlier with with um, you know if you if you want to be a good hockey player if you want to play guitar whatever it is if you don't pick it up and try it then you haven't done anything um so i it's kind of don't be afraid to make mistakes the important thing you, is to leave your mark is kind of just about trying it you know whatever it is that you want to do you have to you have to get go, you have to get started and take that first step if you want to get anywhere with it so that's awesome is there anything else you i had 57 follow-up questions about the fun sister but we'll do that one later <laughs> <laughs> that's fantastic Kathy, thank you so much for joining Thanks us today. You were a me. wonderful surprise, I think, for Mike. Yeah. That was something he had no idea about. The door about. was opening, and I'm like, oh boy, who's on the other side? <laughs> <laughs> he was slightly relieved and slightly yeah. worried it was Kathy, right? It was really hard to beat out Troop 137, but I did it. Yeah. <laughs> this is fantastic. I had so much fun watching you. Uh, I have so much fun seeing where you're going. Mike, let people know where can they find the Doodle Club now and, and what are some of the things going on? And, and thank you so much for, for doing the live show. Yeah, well, first off, thank you, Brett um, and Kathy for coming. But uh, thank you, Brett Poirier, Audrey Enser, and Amanda Timmons, who do all the behind the scenes mm -hmm. editing every, every week for the show. I just come and have fun sitting down to draw for a little bit and then I leave and you guys actually do it. So, um, so thank you. Um, the uh, Mike Page Doodle Club can be found on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, all of them. Type in Mike Page Doodle Club, unless you're on Facebook, and then type in the Mike Page Doodle Club. Because that's what it is, the it's, Doodle Club. <laughs> it's the Doodle Club. <laughs> um, and on any of those, you can uh, join, follow, subscribe, whatever it is for that platform, uh, and then share share your work with us. And maybe let us know if there's a specific thing that you think I should be uh, trying to draw, or maybe you want more basic drawing lessons or something. Let, you know, let, let us know what direction to take it in, and we're happy to uh, incorporate some of that. That's fantastic. Thank you so much. Yeah. So um, thank you, everybody, for tuning in to the big one-year anniversary episode. It's been fun. Um, and don't be afraid to make mistakes. The important thing is that you leave your mark.